All right, now I'm going to try to explain an RAPD in this video. So basically, our first frame will be a normal patient. We're shining the flashlight in the patient's eye. Both pupils will constrict and the non-affected eye. When the flashlight is no longer shining to the patient's eye, both pupils will dilate. And finally, when we shine light the affected eye, both pupils will be dilated more than if we were shining in the contralateral eye. So I'm going to go ahead and put this all together here. So that should kind of help you get an idea of what an RAPD should look like in case you should encounter one. And remember that an RAPD is going to be evident in people with retinal disease or optic nerve disease. This excludes media opacities and vitreous hemorrhages or hyphemas. While I was editing these videos, I came across something additional that y'all should know about the pupils. When we talk about the pupils in the pupil exam, and we talk about relative afferent pupillary defects, these are definitely defects that have to be different from the patient's baseline. The pupil exam has to be done in consideration of everyone's baseline. At baseline, we assume that most people are going to have equal pupils. These drawings are roughly equal, and this is what I'm trying to illustrate through them. Some people, however, are going to have anisocoria, and this basically means that at baseline, without shining any lights whatsoever in their eye, they're going to have different sized pupils. This is different from an RAPD and can give you some troubles when you're doing the pupil exam and you think that the patient might have retinal or optic nerve disease.